Hello, everyone. Welcome to Influence TV. And we have with us a very special guest today, the CEO of Influential, Ryan Dedert. Is that how I pronounce it, Ryan? Uh, Dedert, but close enough. Dedert. My name gets butchered more than anyone else's, so <laughs> I apologize for that. I understand what it sounds like. Now, Influential is a data-first platform that matches brands with influencers. You know how much we love this stuff. I'm very interested in talking to Ryan about how they're doing it, what makes them unique, and how to help you, the marketer, understand how serious to better your campaign results. So with that, Ryan, how are you? I'm great. Great to be here. Now, Ryan, um, we've had some dealings in the past, mainly through one of your former partners. You guys have really built up uh, quite a few social media platforms. So can you tell me, first of all, about your background, which is you know quite unique, quite interesting, how you've come to your position today in leading a company of 90 people, uh, and you've just raised a Series A from, uh, from what I understand. Can you talk about what your background is and how, how you got here today? Sure, so about five, year, five years ago, I was an influencer first. Uh, at our height, had tens of millions of followers on Twitter and Instagram. I've gifted most of those uh, accounts to our company, at Travel on Twitter, at Automotive, at Fashion and Style, uh, at USA, verticalized accounts uh, so that we could go to a brand or agency and say, if you wanted, this is back in the day, if you wanted to be able to hit, hey Marriott, you want to be able to hit travelers, we have at Travel. It was the best way to be able to target people uh, initially uh, years ago. Okay, and how did you get those names? I mean, how do you get at travel? What were you doing this in 2005? Um, yeah, there's a lot of squatting on names. There's a whole separate marketplace where you can buy and sell names as well. And you trade websites. Uh, so went after the ones that I thought were the best fit for uh, a media buyer for a brand. There are also a bunch of parody names. There's people that are the fake Will Ferrell, the fake Barack Obama. Those don't really convert very well in terms of media dollars. But um, yeah, we've got a tremendous, uh, I think we still own five or six million of the followers still to date. Uh, but most of our business now is technology and media, less the content side. Okay, and uh, do you still find Twitter to be a, a good conversion channel as opposed to say YouTube? Uh, unfortunately, Twitter is becoming less and less the, the most prominent channel. Really for us, the, in terms of the dollars being spent by advertisers, it's Instagram followed by Facebook native video. Now Snapchat took over Twitter. Uh, we have followed by YouTube and then followed by uh, Vine, which is unfortunately uh, dying on the Vine, as I'm sure you've seen a lot of the different uh, publications come out with. I mean, I just think Vine just has to go from six seconds to a minute like Instagram did, or maybe they go two minutes. I mean, the six seconds is getting, it, it's too cumbersome for most brands to kind of capitalize on. I'm so tired of these platforms not thinking about the marketer first. It's fine that you think about the customer. I get that. you got to get engagement. But unless unless you monetize these platforms, your platform's not going to survive very much longer. I mean, you see it with with Vine. I'm I'm worried about Periscope at this point, but you've got to you've got to have a product that will help marketers, guys like you, guys like me, become successful while balancing that with the customer. I think nobody's done it better than Facebook. What do you think? Sure, hundred percent. Vine is very voyeuristic. It requires a very small number of people that create content. A lot of people that own accounts but don't actually create their own stuff. It's just very difficult to get six seconds across um, with a cohesive thought or a funny piece of content. Um, so unfortunately, Vine will be relegated to the comedians, the great producers, but they're getting monetized now on Facebook even, but YouTube before that, and uh, there's some other rumblings of other platforms paying creators. It's just difficult to make that happen on Vine because um, you can't put a pre-roll be before it. Um, there's nothing that can actually monetize it on a platform level. So people are being or by, by nature of their wallets going to other platforms like Snapchat, et cetera. Yeah, and so what I have an issue with Snapchat too, but we don't have to get into it here. But with Vine, if you're not monetizing or helping marketers become successful on these platforms, then they're going to go spend their dollars on other sites like YouTube where they can do all those things. And guess what? They're going to drive a lot of views because they're spending money to drive those views to those platforms, which only helps the platform get organic viewers. I, I don't know why companies like Vine that's owned by Twitter don't understand this simple concept. I think they're just playing to the customer and really focusing heavily on the customer. But what they don't realize is the marketer is also the customer. And, and they've got they got to come up with that balance. Well, 100 percent. And the, the biggest issue I've seen is that and it's, it's something it's it should be the reason why they don't 
they're not on a platform from a media company or agency. They go, well, I'm Tide or I'm XYZ brand. I don't have my own personal Vine account because that would require a whole content team that is really great at creating six second videos. Um, by that nature, they all have a Facebook account. They all have an Instagram account. They feel comfortable. At the very least, they'll drive them. They'll drive additional followers and people to their own accounts. They can't make that justification on Vine, so therefore, it's left just for this one-off opportunity. It's not a consistent overall strategy. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Obviously, I mean, we share we share kind of this fascination with this space and what's going on in it, and that br brings up kind of my my next question: what what do people not understand about influencer marketing? So for the last five plus years, it's been all the talent model. It's the MCNs, it's the WMEs, the CAAs of the world. They're saying, I've got someone super sexy. It's my roster. You got to buy them regardless of the activation. They're great. What we're saying and what is differentiating why we've, we've been able to succeed and get such a massive number of, uh, of campaigns recently is we're going data first. So based off of a three headed monster of demographic, demographic relevance, semantic or psychographic relevance through our partnership with IBM Watson, or through contextual relevance, being able to make sure that someone has actually said the words like travel or hotels or beaches or whatever it ends up being for a hotelier client. We can show that they've said that a hundred times in the last month or the last year. All these data points say that this is the best possible influencer for you. We have no dog in the fight. Anyone that has a dog in the fight in terms of their actual client, they're going to fight for a talent model. We fight for essentially a media buy saying, get the best people to deliver a message to your audience. Don't worry about what that individual looks like or the number of followers he has. Okay, good. And, and I'm glad you brought up IBM Watson because I know you're making a special announcement tomorrow. Now, this won't air until tomorrow, so we can talk about this. I know you've got uh, uh, an embargo on this, but you can talk about it. Uh, so you partner with IBM's Watson, which is extremely interesting to me. I thought about doing the same thing. It just wasn't the right timing for them. Uh, and now you've got Condé Nast as a client, and you're coming out with this big announcement tomorrow. So first, what is the announcement? And second, why did they choose you? What's the why, why you over everyone else? So first with IBM, we created a technology with IBM through their API. We're a developer partner that essentially figures out psychographics. So when an influencer posts, how are they being perceived when they speak? It's called the Big Five Theory. It's, it's taught in all these different classrooms across uh, the US. Basically, are you considered adventurous? Are you considered um, altruistic? Are you conscientious? Are you hedonistic? Archetypes or traits that best define an influencer based on what they've said over the last 22,000 words they've spoken on social media. So instead of just worrying about how many followers they have, or even if demographically they're relevant, which is important, are they being perceived as someone that should put out an action film if they're adventurous? Are they being perceived if they should be putting out a beauty product, if they're into self-enhancement? So all of these pieces of the data and information has allowed for us to create a technology with IBM to really uh, delve deep into an activation. Okay, and, and why, why kind of this artificial intelligence and not human intelligence? What is Watson going to give you that an analyst won't, for example? Well, there obviously it's unbiased first and foremost. And the amount of unstructured data that exists on these social media platforms, a human can't do. It's just, it's just impossible. It would take hundreds and hundreds of people to do what we do with you know, a technology that we build uh, and we're always improving. Uh, so for us, it was how do we scale? We're really word of mouth at scale. How do we build products that also scale with this landscape, which has went from probably a quarter billion dollars in, in uh, allocated money last year, to I believe approximately about two billion this year. It's gonna probably double again, if not more for next year. We have to make sure that we're not just packing on more people, we're using technology to determine the best possible fit for, uh, for these, these campaigns. And what is Condé Nast gonna do with this, uh, with you and, and with the, the IBM Watson technology? So they are a media partner. They have a giant sales team of, I'm sure, thousands of different individuals. And we're helping both the top layer of sales team and the individual brands, the publications, that we, as we call them, uh, how they best can go to a client and still pitch their product, but make sure it's amplified by the appropriate social media influencers based on data. So we are an amplification play. And Watson factors in because you can figure out, for example, for beauty, I mentioned before, self-enhancement, hedonism, whatever the trade is that makes the most sense 
uh, for that brand. We are now powering uh, the social media portion for uh, Condé Nast. Okay, and what does that mean you're helping to amplify? I could see you're identifying the influencers, but how are you amplifying that content? So let's say a piece of content was uh, created by Condé. It's a tremendous, beautiful 15 second piece or 30 second piece. We then have influencers that have been selected through these different processes, IBM Watson, demographics, et cetera. And they put out a sponsored post, FTC compliant, hashtag ad, hashtag sponsor. And we can do that through our technology where we can say 20 people are lined up to post at an exact same time to create a worldwide trend or to control share of voice on any given moment. We essentially are using the, the voices of influencers with the content that's been created by Condé, but they put it into their own words. So they can talk about it and say it and produce it or, or, and release it to their, to their fans. And it doesn't feel like it's contrived. How do you get 10 influencers to do that? I mean, uh, are you telling them what to say or are they putting their own voice to it or is it a combination of both? We call it your choice, your voice. Take what the brand wants you to say in a creative brief and put it into your own words. We control what's called the API token. We can post on behalf of the influencer into their own feeds. So I think of it as a double opt-in. So when the brand approves it and the influencer uh, submits it and approves it, once they both approve it, we play as an escrow bank and can release it on their behalf. So you don't have to worry about someone forgetting to post, <laughs> being, being hung over the night before and not and actually doing it, or just putting the wrong hashtag or a misspelling. All of it's controlled through technology, no more human error. I mean, one of the biggest problems we have is, okay, we can identify who the influencers are, and, and it's probably even better with your technology because you're using Watson. I've got a lot of experience with Watson. Uh, and by the way, just as a little side note, Watson has made unique recipes uh, on its own. I mean, that's how powerful this this platform is. It's not just for marketing. You can use it for a wide variety of activities. That aside, um, how are you, it's one thing to identify them, but how are you getting them to say and raise their hand, hey, I'm going to do this for you? Because it seems like the more popular they are, the harder it is to get them to, to agree to anything. Sure. So we have a mobile first app on their hip pocket. 7,000 have been allowed in, kind of a Soho house of social. Uh, we've made it so that in order for them to qualify to be allowed into this deal-making, uh, offering marketplace, as you want to call it, uh, they must be in the top 1% level of engagement. So we are constantly scraping the internet, trying to find the best possible influencers. We reach out, we offer them brand deals. Our brands ex cons uh, consist of you know, Sony, Warner Brothers, Unilever, Kia, I mean, all Fortune 100, Fortune 500 type brands. Uh, so it behooves them to get these alerts directly to their hip pocket. And when a brand says, I want to hit 18 to 34 males and an affinity for sports for Gatorade, they get push notified with an opportunity, a stock price based on uh, the demographic, as well as a creative brief saying, here's what you have to create. Do you accept or do you deny? If they opt in, they have brand deals of plenty. They can pay their rent. They can make a bunch of money. Or if they say it's not a fit for us, when I want to stay more organic until a, a better opportunity comes about. We, we wait for that and we actually encourage them, don't just take a deal for money, do it because you believe in it and it's actually a brand that you have used before. Okay, so from start to finish, you know, if I wanna launch a campaign, how long would this take on your platform? Let's say today I went to your platform, <clears throat> you run a lot of campaigns, uh, and I'm actually gonna try this by the way, you've convinced me. Um, how long it, will it take for a typical campaign to get launched? We suggest a two-week kind of ramp up of approvals of influence, approval of content, um, any last minute iterations, optimizations. We've done things in, in under 24 hours, though. So when a movie client says it's Thursday, we're not tracking well, Friday is the release date, what can we get up live to be able to hopefully change sentiment um, to go watch this movie tomorrow night? Uh, it's not ideal, but we can do that as long as the brand or agency is ready to approve. Our side, technology-wise, um, and influencer side, they're ready to go. It's more of just the legal and the branding portion, which as things have gone over the last year and a half, it's become, it's become far more streamlined. They're used to the process now. And that's where our technology helps streamline. Um, but there's always some human that has to say, this fits, this doesn't fit, and that's the holdup usually. Okay, yeah, I mean, there's, it's usually human <laughs> that's, that's holding things up, unfortunately. We, it's an interesting industry, as you, you're probably aware, especially as an influencer and building up your own social networks. There's a a lot of flaky people, but there's also a lot of fantastic people that really can move the needle. And it sounds like you're, you're finding them um, on a regular basis. So that, that kind of leads me to my next question is, 
who are the influencers that you're watching in the space that are really doing unique things, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, what have you? Who should we all be emulating, uh, not only as a as an influencer, but maybe as a marketer? Yeah, the most of our people on our platform are are agnostic. They pick all the platforms and have been creating some form of content per some that are on, on Instagram for the most part have been just picture based because that's the platform expects everyone expects that to be the case. Now it's stories has popped up and they've now started creating their own video stuff. Ultimately find your voice. This might sound kind of hokey, but uh, some are comedians, some are just content capturers, some are just, um, you know, can give a little tidbit throughout the day. Uh, when we pick out an influencer for a campaign, whether they're a video creator or an image based person, that's all being picked out by the marketer. People care what you've done in the past. So make sure whatever you're doing on social media is what you're best at because when a brand deal comes along, they're not gonna just say, great, you've made some tremendous pictures on Instagram, go make this amazing video. They won't trust that you can do that. Uh, so just be aware, either do everything really well or pick something you really are great at because um, that allows for more brand deals, more opportunities. But are there like three that you're really thinking, wow, I mean, they're really unique. Like for us, it's a, it's a YouTuber, there's a YouTube uh, partnership called Healthy Junk Food. I mean, we sent them out to Domino's, we sent them out to Qdoba, and they produce some phenomenal videos. These are like food unboxing videos, and they just come out so well. They're better than any commercial I've seen Domino's or, or Qdoba put out. Uh, and I just feel like most, if you want to get into the unboxing game on, on uh, YouTube, which is very lucrative, by the way, uh, those are that's, a, a, that's an up-and-comer to watch. Do you have any you know, any influencers that you, you know, really point to say, Hey, if you want to learn something, check these three or check this, check these two out. I would say that, uh, I'm my favorite because we've done multiple campaigns with them, campaigns with them. And, uh, he's one of the funniest human beings I've ever seen. Uh, Landon Moss, not a massive footprint, but he's on all platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, and he is doing constant content about, everyday relevant hilarious moments and then when we bring him into a campaign with we're working with him for uh jolly ranchers or for one of those type of brands he makes very very funny content that literally outperforms some of his original or organic content because it's so funny and so uh native to his uh, his voice so people like that you have to you have to find and emulate if you're someone trying to become an influencer yourself got it okay we'll put that in the show notes uh and I'm, if he's on multiple campaigns, we'll, we'll look him up. So that's somebody I haven't heard of that uh, mm -hmm. I, I just definitely want to check out. Anybody that's very unique and moving the needle. And in the comments, if you know of somebody, just put them down in the comments here so that we can, we can keep an eye on them. So, uh, Ryan, what are the successful elements of an influencer marketing campaign? Whether you have a process yourself or what you recommend clients or what have you, how do you really make sure that you can move the needle in an influential mar influencer marketing campaign? So the first step is <clears throat> why we say we're data first is we're running all of their handles, all the conversations. Um, we're essentially doing a deep data dive before we even start with the campaign to figure out how best to make sure it performs well per the KPIs, the key performance indicators. Um, we asked the brand, what do you really want to accomplish? Is it video views? Is it clicks to your website? Is it general branding? It can't be everything. It's got to be one thing. That's the one thing you have to learn on social media. It's, you have to pick one thing for someone to do, otherwise they get paralysis. Uh, so for us, it is essentially identifying the best influencers per the KPI, uh, making sure they hit the actual audience that you're making a buy on 1834 mail, et cetera. Um, and that they contextually are talking about the thing that you want to promote. Then we optimize in real time. The worst thing you can do is just post it, post, you know, 20 over the course of three days and never actually figure out a way to make sure that, Oh, great. So this hashtag is being conflated with another event that's happening in the world. Now we're losing kind of share of voice or it's being uh, thrown off. We usually have campaigns that are from two weeks. We have the occasional one day like blitz, but, uh, two weeks to three months. In those three-month campaigns, we learn so much on how to optimize, uh, and those dollars are usually larger, so we can actually spend more money. Go, you know what? Instagram's not working. Let's go to YouTube. YouTube's not working. Let's go to Twitter. Um, so we're able to actually do a real media buy, but shift it according to the KPIs of the client and the learnings we get back through our technology. Okay. And are, are there anything 
anything that you would suggest in terms of working with the influencers directly that um, that come to mind? Uh, let me give you an example. That's probably the best way. We have a lot of trouble with some influencers. I'd say 30% of them. They're not as bad as celebrities. Celebrities are the worst, especially the singers. But with influencers and getting them to do what they should be doing on time. So is there any suggestions you have for working with influencers directly to make sure, as you said before, those 10 tweets or those 10 posts are done within a certain uh, time period, time frame, so that your launch is successful? So through our technology, and you can apply this without technology, it's a little harder though. Um, we have uh, essentially a time, a stopwatch. When they get push notified with an opportunity, they have exactly two hours or two days or the number is to create this content and this copy back. If not, they'll be removed from the campaign. Now, because we push notify, we have a larger pool of people that have been approved. If somebody just goes, I can't do it, or they're, or they, they're missing their timelines, next man up. We do not wait around for talent. Instead, we say we're hitting an audience. So whether that influencer can make it or not, it's up to them. If they need to be moved out of the way because they can't do it anymore, someone else take their spot. Great. Okay, great. And I'm glad you got a technology that does that because it makes it a lot easier. Uh, but if it's something like a YouTube video, you know, I, I suspect, well, you probably have a way of shooting video, right? Where you say, hey, you got to shoot this video by a certain time frame. Is that correct? Yes, 100%. Okay. But then it takes time to edit. So you're probably giving them a, a week or two window at least in order to make it uh, worthwhile. We have, we have time frames. Obviously, if it's, if it's a really, really well produced video, it might take a week or so. But most of our stuff really is micro content. It's, you know, three to five days max on YouTube. We're talking, we're talking about, you know, three hour to one day on Instagram or Twitter. Really, we've made it so that we are a frequency of deal flow. If they want the money, it's there. If they go, you know what, it's just, I don't, it's not worth the money for me. And it's not really a fit for me or I don't have time right now. I'm too busy. That's fine. That's what their agents are for. That's what their managers are for. That's what the MCNs are for. We are just a way to, at scale, get people that want to make good money very quickly, but doing uh, really great micro content. Got it. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. So let's kind of transition um, to uh, a, kind of a, a round that I like that has more to do with helping people in business. Okay. We've, we've covered influencer marketing. I think you've given us a lot of great tips. Uh, and I think I've shared with you a few of our, our failures and <laughs> some of the things that we do or have done wrong. Uh, so I appreciate that. So my, uh, my next question would be around if you could send, since you're in Twitter a lot, you use Twitter, you've got influencers using Twitter. If you could send a tweet to the entire world, what would you say in 140 characters? For business specifically? It could be for anything you want. What would you, if I gave you the power to, to make sure that every, uh, all of the 300 million Twitter users saw your tweet, what would you, what would you tweet them? I'm very sorry for Trump. <laughs> I didn't think you'd go political, but uh, okay. <laughs> in, uh, terms of, in terms of business, I would say that talent model is dead, that buy programmatically, buy media the way you're supposed to buy it uh, through demographics and contextual nature. Um, I think that's 140 characters, but essentially buy based on a media, media buy, not based off of a talent model. Don't pick one influencer, pick many. Okay. All right. And, and if I gave you a budget of a billion dollars today, what would you do with it? If I'm trying to get a brand to control, share a voice, be at the top of everyone's uh, feeds, honestly, with a billion, you have enough money to be able to essentially do what Ninantic did for uh, Pokemon Go. I would Pokemonify their brand somehow. Obviously, it'd have to be for millennials or for, for Gen Zers, but augmented reality uh, creating a gamification, uh, as long as it was relevant to the brand, would be an automatic hit because everyone wants to be able to uh, live and play the game that is related to that brand. I think you're going to buy Twitter. I wonder if you could buy them for a for billion dollars. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I don't know what they're worth in the market, but uh, I think if you float a billion dollars right now, somebody might uh, at least look at the proposal. <laughs> um, okay, so... Last question, if, if you could change one thing about your life instantly, what would it be? Uh, getting more sleep, uh, <laughs> traveling two weeks out of the month, uh, and then hiring people that uh, can do all the things that I do currently as part of a larger whole as a company. 
I think ultimately the C let the C suite of our company would love uh, nap time. Yeah, I mean, it becomes a problem, doesn't it? When you're not getting enough sleep, you're, you kind of find that you're not as enthusiastic. You're not working as intelligently, as smartly as you can. I think we all want another better version of ourselves helping us uh, so that we can get more sleep. Yeah, exactly. All right. Is there uh, anything I didn't ask that I should have asked in terms of uh, influence or marketing or business in general or your love of Donald Trump? <laughs> Um, no, I think you covered all of it. Uh, just for the record, I do not love Donald Trump. <laughs> sure the world isn't going to the airwaves. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how the future of this uh, market, this marketplace goes. Um, I, I believe that all of the di digital dollars and the traditional dollars are going in the space, and uh, fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time, and really have a tremendous team to be able to uh, you know bring the future uh, you know, to these agencies and brands. Most people are still stuck in the old talent model. We believe there's a better way. Okay, great. And if you want to check out Ryan's company, Influential, go to influential.co. That's influential.co. Don't add an M. I don't know where that'll take you. Please also remember that there's a influencer TV show every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Pacific. Uh, if you subscribe, and I urge you subscribe, uh, you'll get this automatically. We also have growth hacks, marketing hacks, everything you can think of, all the things that we're experiencing, our successes, our failures. We're letting you know transparently within, within our agency what works. We are going to check out Influential. We will give you kind of our review of the platform. It sounds very interesting. And knowing these guys, I know they've got something uh, that's going to really move the needle. So I'm excited to check it out. We'll report on that in the next couple of weeks. Thank you, Ryan. Pleasure having you. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it.